coming to you from Annapolis, Maryland, home of the U.S. Naval Academy, the sailing capital of the world, home of the world's largest crab feast, and four signers of the Declaration of Independence. This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, a daily roundup of local news that you can use, including local sports, local events, local opinion, and local weather from DMV Weather. Now here's your host, publisher of Eye on Annapolis, John Frenet. Good morning. It is Tuesday, January 23rd. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Washington is open for business. Congress sped toward reopening the government yesterday as Democrats reluctantly voted to temporarily pay for resumed operations only through February 8th. They relented in their fight over immigration in return for assurances from Republican leaders that the Senate would take up the plight of young dreamers, also known as DACA, as well as some other issues after February 8th. Immigration activists are upset. They would wish that the Democrats had fought a little bit longer and harder for the legislation to prevent the deportation of nearly 700,000 or so younger immigrants who were brought into the country as children and are now here illegally. Senate Republican Leader Mitch McConnell Connell made a commitment to quickly tackle the issue of the Dreamers after February 8th, and that was contingent on the Democrats providing enough votes to allow the budget to continue. Maryland Governor Larry Hogan announced a package of state income, property, sales tax credits, and exemptions in hopes to land Amazon's second headquarters here in Maryland. Montgomery County made Amazon's shortlist of 20 finalists. The $5 billion package includes a state income tax credit equivalent to 5.75% of wages for each new qualifying headquarters job, a state and local property tax credit, and a state sales and use tax exemption. The law, dubbed the Prime Act, will apply pretty much to Amazon only because it's got some pretty specific criteria. Must be a Fortune 100 company. Must be a new headquarters in the state of Maryland. Employees must earn an average of at least $100,000 per year. The company must also commit to spending $5 billion in capital across 17 years, $500 million in initial project cost, and employ at least 40,000 people during that 17-year span. In a statement, Hogan said, HQ2 is the single greatest economic development opportunity in a generation, and we are committing all of the resources we have to bring it home to Maryland. The Housing Authority of the City of Annapolis, once again, raising eyebrows. They have canceled their January meeting and instead is planning a closed meeting to be taken over the phone by the remaining commissioners. Just recently, we've had the resignation of Commissioner John Dillon. About a month ago, we had the resignation of Commissioner Chip Dorden. The Capitol newspaper reports that the subject matter of the closed session is likely related to bids for the redevelopment of the Newtown 20 neighborhood. That aging property has had several units closed for years as HACA has weighed the cost of short-term repairs compared to a full redevelopment of the property. In years past, HACA has run into some problems with their open meeting laws. It is unsure whether this will be another one of those problems. Alan Hyatt, a local attorney that tends to work with a lot of developers, has filed suit against the city in Anne Arundel County Circuit Court, claiming that the law they adopted in October requiring developers to hold community meetings prior to submitting any plans is flawed. He also argues that the city council violated its own rules in considering the law. Now, the law requires a party interested in building a subdivision with any new street to conduct a community meeting in a place that is reasonably accessible to those who live or own property near the development and provide notes on the meeting to the city. It also changes the parties a developer must notify of impending construction to include the ward representative on the council and a list of community representative bodies as well. That law was enacted back in October and was in the middle of several different projects which are underway within the city, four of which Mr. Hyatt represents. Mayor Buckley talked to the Capitol newspaper this week and said he has a new music festival coming to Annapolis this year. The music festival will be called Annapolis Rising, and it will take place for three days on the college campus of St. John's. It'll be September 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, and the festival will honor a few of St. John's musical alumni, Atlantic Records founder Ahmet Erdogan, Elektra Records founder Jack Holtzman, and the author of the Star Spangled Banner, Francis Scott Key. The Annapolis Symphony Orchestra is going to perform songs from the two recording labels on the festival's first night. Saturday will feature the main acts of the festival, followed by a gospel brunch picnic on the lawn on Sunday. 
Money raised from the festival will go to nonprofits for flood mitigation and a fundraiser for St. John's College. Stay tuned for some more information on that, and also stay tuned for your local weather information from George Young from DMV Weather, who is coming right up right after Sean O'Neill from RBC Wealth Management. I'm Sean O'Neill, your local RBC Wealth Management Advisor. When you choose to work with me, you'll have access to a worldwide network of financial products and services only available from a leading global institution. RBC's international reputation for physical strength and stability, world-class capabilities, and corporate values is unique in the financial services industry. I also recognize the importance of reinvesting in the communities in which we live and work, and I'm committed to serving my clients by building long-term relationships based on trust, integrity, and confidence. I look forward to helping you with your wealth management needs. Call me, Sean O'Neill, today at 410-573-6723 for a complimentary consultation. RBC Wealth Management, a division of RBC Capital Markets, LLC. Member NYSE, FINRA, and SIPC. This is Maryland. The weather can be nearly unpredictable. We've got George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis to sort it all out. Hey, everyone. This is George from DMV Weather with your Eye on Annapolis daily news brief forecast for Tuesday, January 23rd. More 50s and 60s yesterday for downtown Annapolis and BWI, marking the fourth straight day of high temps hitting at least 50 degrees. And today will be the fifth in a row, despite rain showers and possibly even some rumbles of thunder mixed in, as a potent low-pressure center well to the northwest of our area over the Great Lakes region pushes a cold front eastward and through Annapolis later today. The net result, first rain, then breezy conditions, lasting all the way through Wednesday, and then a return Wednesday through Friday to average, if not slightly below average, and slightly cold-fielding air temperatures. Rain today should generally remain a threat through late morning or early afternoon. Then skies will clear fairly quickly as overnight temps into Wednesday morning drop into the low to mid-30s with 20s likely both Wednesday and Thursday nights. So stay dry out there today and be safe on the roads as this latest weather maker moves through. Okay, that's it for us today. Make sure you download our free weather app in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store on all of your devices by searching for DC MDVA Weather. And also follow us on our website at dmvweather.com or on Twitter or Facebook so you can always stay weather informed. This is George Young of DMV Weather with your Annapolis forecast. Despite the changes in the skies above with windy, wet, and then colder conditions in the forecast, remember, whatever the weather outside, have fun and be safe. I'm Sean O'Neill, your local RBC Wealth Management Advisor. More than likely, the primary reason you save and invest is to achieve your life goals while ensuring your long-term financial well-being. But before you can determine your preparedness towards your goals, you need long-term answers to important questions about how much money you need, where it will come from, and how long it will last. RBC Wealth Plan, a new industry-leading tool, is now available to help answer these questions and develop your personal plan using a conversational approach. With RBC Wealth Plan, we can create a personal analysis based on these unique goals while offering you the ability to weigh certain decisions and determine what's best for you and your family. Call me, Sean O'Neill, today at 410-573-6723 for a complimentary consultation. RBC Wealth Management, a division of RBC Capital Markets, LLC. Member NYSE, FINRA, and SIPC. Thanks for listening to the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief. If you like what you heard, make sure to tell your friends and colleagues about it. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find much more. Be sure to check out our other weekly podcast, The Maryland Crabs. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.